He told me how long he had been thinking about writing a piano concerto. Starting out as a young man, wanting to become a concert pianist, but then changing his mind and that, that he had thought about composing an actual piano concerto for about 50 years before he found the, the courage to, to go through with it. I think it's quite amazing. So in the, in the 1930s, Rutoswavsky thought of writing a piano concerto for himself to play, but he changed his mind and came back to it as a mature composer. First, how do you start the piano concerto? I very much like the, the atmosphere and the unique sound world that he creates, how it starts in the woodwinds. It's almost like as if you come into the room and the music has already started. There isn't just a, a start to it. It's I, I think he hadn't found the language that he felt he wanted to write a piano concerto, which is it's quite a big deal to write a piano concerto. There are quite a few before, especially if you want to write one that's worthwhile and might stay around in a repertoire. I think he was very aware of, of that legacy. Well, one thing that, that strikes me about this piano concerto are the textures sometimes. The sonorities in the piano concerto and the orchestra are very modern. But, being a pianist himself, the piano part is sometimes very classical in the way it's written. It's very romantic and it's also very modern, so that's quite an interesting thing. And I think that comes from him having been a pianist. The second movement, which starts very confidently, very declamatory. And again, this confidence runs out into the sand, slightly re reminiscent of Bartok or even the last movement of Chopin's second sonata. orchestrates and how he uses the piano and also there are these ad libitum sections. Of course not you can play which notes you want, no, that's very, you have to play what he wrote, but how many times and exactly the, the tempo that fluctuates from performance to performance, so the concerto actually changes from performance to performance. Everything I play is exactly notated, it's just in the orchestra, so that I can approach it any way I want. It, it's going to change around me, the landscape is going to change. So it's, it's a different piece whenever, every time it's played, slightly. So it's kind of organized chaos. I really love that gear change towards the end of the cadenza. You go from this, this craziness to paradise in two bars. Which leads to the, the third movement, which for me is maybe the, the highlight of the whole concerto. And really uh, epitomizes the late style of Lutoswavsky. It's all through the prism of his own genius. I mean, having been a great pianist himself, he, he said that he played a lot of Chopin when he was young. He also said that the life-changing experience in his life when he was young was hearing Szymanowski's Third Symphony. He played a lot of Brahms. He, he went through a Debussy Ravel phase. So it, it's all in there, but in his own unique language. <laughs> 